concrete. Um, there's a lot of, of good talk about how we should secure things, how we should get along things, but at the same time, the actual driving force behind there doesn't seem that strong. How can that be pushed forward? You know, and I've spent, uh, I, I learned a new phrase while I was here, you know, a serial entrepreneur. I'm, I'm a serial public servant. <laughs> um, and in the public sector, what you learn is there isn't a lot of should. There's a lot of did or did not. What did you do? What did you fail to do? Um, and how can you make up the difference? Uh, I don't think there is any question that the administration is committing, committed to elevating cyberspace, the challenges of cybersecurity to everyone's awareness and consciousness. Education is key here. How do we do it? We've launched cyber challenges in order to promote more learning, more sharing, um, uh, new information coming in to solve practical problems. It's only a piece of the puzzle. It's only the beginning of the effort. Um, but we are committed to doing whatever we can to harness the energy ideas and commitment of this group um, into the public sector, into public service uh, for the purposes of cybersecurity. I mentioned what we're doing on Einstein too. We have colleagues here that can talk to you about the other programs, standing up uh, national cyber incident response capability, standing up an a, a incident center to be able to respond immediately. Um, these may be gestures in your mind. We view them as important steps down the path of creating this secure cyber environment. Okay, we'll take another question from this side of the room, and then we'll... Oh, you've got it one over there? Okay, go ahead. When you're speaking about homeland security priorities, you had immigration above cybersecurity. Uh, considering the stagnation of the immigration issue in this country and the priority and how, much, how large the impact is with cyber, uh, can you share with the rationale behind that prioritization? It's not a list of prioritizations. They're all essential and key. The um, five, five components of the whole. Right. Okay, that was a quick question. Let's try another one. <laughs> I believe there's a gentleman over here. Given the Department of Homeland Security's creation of TSA, which has been mocked by not only the United States security profession, but the whole world, why should we believe that DHS is going forward is going to protect cyber in, this, in something other than the same way that now, as TSA slows down air travel, DHS will now, in the cyberspace realm, slow down both commerce and the exchange of knowledge. It will. It won't surprise you to learn that I differ from your with your characterization of TSA. Um, <laughs> You know, there is, a, there is a tension and duality in Homeland Security, as I mentioned on the border mission. We want to keep out people and goods that might be dangerous, but we need to expedite legitimate trade and travel. That's essential for the security of this country. It's a challenge that exists here. We happen to believe that we can achieve our security, we can protect our rights, we can promote commerce and lawful interchange. We can have all of these things, but we need to engage in a debate about how we will prioritize and how we will strike a balance. And the department is determined to be a portal for that debate. You know, societies used to have a conversation with themselves through their governments. In many respects, we're not talking to each other anymore. In many respects, we're throwing assertions back and forth at each other and seeing who has the more clever retort who has thought of the newer idea. We need to evolve these ideas. We need to extrude them through our own experience to understand what it is we will do about the problems that we face. And that's our determination, uh, whether it's border security, whether it's cybersecurity as well. Let us all give uh, Jane Lute a warm round of applause. 